So I have my editor here. They have buttons here. So I have this like a multi-state selector and I reuse it down here to select the object type of the currently edited object and stuff. And I use it here again. And so these I do with sort of my own EM GUI stuff. I can show you quickly how some of it looks. Uh, we have, for example, this, we have the save button. You can click and stuff. Here you have if GUI button save. And, and we also have the main toolbar is just direct. So, and then I say, okay, take the address of the main toolbar and split off this amount from it uh, and return how big the direct is. So it takes, this function takes just that. This is the main toolbar comes in here and then it says to split off some amount and return the, the, the part the part on the le left side of the main toolbar rect. So, so it tries to like take some space on the left side here and 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 mod also modify the rectangle you will send in. So it now it starts over here instead instead of starting here. So that that's why you take a pointer here. The the width here I used use a function called button width, which calculates how wide the text will be using the font and stuff. And the GUI button, this is what I want to show here. So I have made a little uh, EMGUI system, UI.Odin. I come to this function and then I say, fetch the next ID. My IDs are just UIN64s and that's just a counter that gets counted up. Then it's reset to zero and start up each frame. And then it counts up again. Those are used to know like, oh, which thing am I currently hovering? This is very similar, you know, to all the EMGUI libs floating around, but I'm just doing the simple stu simple stuff I need. So I have this little button here and then it draws, it gets the, the text size, which just uh, measures the text uh, by using the font. So I, I tell Raylib to kind of just draw a rectangle with my control background color, which is a color I've figured out is nice. So it's this little background here and then it draws some lines around it on this rect. And I remember this rect is the one I, I calculated, I, I split off from the main toolbar here. And then I get the mouse position and then I check, is the mouse position inside this rect? In that case, I, I, I go to my UI and say the next hovered ID is this one. It's the one, the one here. Hover next, this is just this one. So it just sets that one. Then we have this function inside the UI code here, which is run at the start of every frame. It run in a game update, I think. Yeah, UI.newframe it says. And this one just resets the ID counter, right? Because so, so the IDs match up each frame as it goes through the update hierarchy. And then it sets hover to next hover. So it transfer whatever was in hover, next hover to the current hover. And the reason this is sort of frame delayed, for example, you might have a smaller thing within a bigger thing. So you can hover the big thing and then you can hover the smaller thing inside. So then the last next hover to be set is the one that will be used, right? Uh, so it, it catches that one, sets next hover to zero. And then I also have a little thing called clicked here, which is set to zero. Now you will show what that is. So if the mouse button, left mouse button goes down, if hover is not zero, then there was something under your mouse cursor when you clicked down the mouse button. And then it says, okay, the mouse uh, went down while hovering hover, which is just the UI ID. So in this case, you have the GUI, GUI button. This one has says next hover and, and the ho it has been transferred into hover here and then the mouse goes down. So then uh, it will, uh, the mouse has gone down. So it will check, okay, hover is not zero. And then we set mouse down hover. And then if we later lift up the mouse button again, then uh, if mouse button hover is still hover, uh, so if the hovered thing is still the thing we originally went down with the mouse button on, then we say, you click this thing. And then we set this mouse button hover to zero. The reason we do all this, instead of just like, we could just check like, okay, which thing are we hovering when the mouse goes down? And then say that, oh, we click that. Or we could say, uh, which thing were we hovering when the mouse went up? And we click that. The reason we don't want to do that is because in UIs, you're used to be able to... Uh, if I click this one and stay, then it actually clicks it. If I go out and release, nothing happens. This is what you expect from a button, right? But if I go out and then go back in again, release, then it still clicks. That's also what you expect. And you get all that from this little thing that it, when you hover, if you're hovering and click, then it says, this is the thing you were hovering when the mouse went down. And then later when the mouse goes up, it checks, is it still the same thing 
you're hovering that you hovered when it went down. And in that case, it's clicked. And then this click thing is quite nice. In GUI button, I used return. U is UI.clicked equals to ID. The state selector, which is the... Uh, this one is the state selector. In this one, it, it loops over all the items in it. And it makes an ID for each. And then it just checks if UI.clicked is this one, then it sets the new state. The new state is the thing that will be returned. Uh, so then it will know which if uh, the state changed, right? The thing I really like is, you know, just having the a bunch of these different functions that take a pointer to a rectangle and uh, just it just sort of almost like a take a scissors and cuts off a piece either from the left or from the top. So this this toolbar on the right here, for example, is just um, where is the side panel? Yeah, then it just says. Uh, take the whole rect, which is the whole window that is left. Uh, but the, first we, we split off the, the main toolbar. And then we get the rect. We say split off from the right with this width. And then we have our side panel rect, which would be this one. And then when we later want to get this rect down here, the bottom panel, then we split from the rect again. But then this rect is sort of this area down here, right? You just splitting off and getting smaller and smaller chunks out. And then a nice side effect is also that whatever is left in rect in the end is actually the area I'm going to draw in.